I'd like to thank pptoutdoor.com for sponsoring this video. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Guns and Guitars, and today we are looking at the ET Dragon military grade red dot sight. Now, from what I can tell, this is more or less a clone of a Vortex Viper or Vortex Venom low profile red dot sight, but it's better in a lot of ways, and probably the best way is it comes in at nearly half the price, which is what this channel is all about. All right, let's dive in, take a closer look at this thing. I'm Dan, this is Guns and Guitars, and let's get started. So what is the ET Dragon Red Dot Sight and what makes it quote military grade? Because I know you've never heard of the ET Dragon. I hadn't heard of the ET Dragon until PP Outdoor sent me, PP Outdoor, <laughs> PPT Outdoor sent me one to test and evaluate. So what makes this military grade, at least from what I can tell, I'm gonna go ahead and compare it to the Vortex Viper or the Vortex Venom. Um, I've got nothing against those sights. I've been using them for years. They are great, but they just kind of seem to be the closest comparison for this optic. So for example, this optic has a 1000 G shock resistance rating. So well above what you get from Vortex. And it also has a waterproof rating down to five meters, which I haven't actually tested how waterproof this thing is. We'll do that a little bit later in this video. But other than that, from what I can tell, it's just kind of your basic bare bones, low profile red dot sight. You know, something that would be great for your rifle caliber pistol, your pistol caliber carbine, your handgun, carry gun, anything that you want to have a red dot optic, but you need it to be lightweight and low profile so it doesn't snag on things. Uh, that's where this fits the bill. So what do I mean by bare bones? I mean, it doesn't have any like auto dimness or brightness. It doesn't have any shake awake technology like you'd find on optics twice the price, like Holosun, Swamp Fox, Six Sour, that kind of stuff. It's just your basic turn it on, adjust your brightness, turn it off when you're done. So you can see it's just very simple. You got your power on, you got your brightness down and your brightness up and very easy to operate controls. They have a nice positive click for on and off so you know that you actually engaged it, but they do need to be intentionally engaged. I've never accidentally turned this thing on or off just by brushing up against it or setting it down. It does require a very intentional click, which is a good thing because once you turn it on, you don't wanna accidentally turn it off, right? The only downside is that if you need to grab this thing and turn it on real quick, it does require a very intentional fine motor skill to engage it, which is actually the same as a Vortex Viper or Vortex Venom. And again, nothing against the Vortex sights. I own them and use them personally. Like I said, it's just the closest comparison. But again, considering that comparison, the Vortex Red Dots come in at a retail price of about $280. Um, street price around $225, $250. And this thing comes in at just $150. So considering that this thing comes in with all the features of a Vortex Red Dot, including the same footprint so you can use your Vortex mounting plates, and the fact that it's five meter waterproof and 1000 G shock resistant for a price of $150. That makes this an incredible value. But that's enough of the specs. Let's talk about my experience with this thing. Now I've had this optic for about five months now and I have collectively put well over a thousand rounds uh, through it on various platforms, some of it being 5.56, some of it being nine millimeter on my Ruger PC charger, and some of it being just 22 on my Ruger 22.45 Mark IV. I've not had any issues with it holding zero on any of those guns. It's lightweight and low profile like it should be. It points really fast. I mean, what, you know, clearing jams and things, I can get back on target really fast with this thing. Yeah. It's pretty awesome. When it comes to that sort of thing, it's just as good as any other more expensive optic that I've used. Now, even though I ran several hundred rounds through my uh, PC charger with this thing, I found that actually its best use is on an AR pistol or on a handgun. On my PC charger, I was just faster and more accurate with my big old honkin' sight mark reflex sight, uh, which is a really cool sight. You definitely wanna check out that video if you haven't yet. But for whatever reason, on my AR pistol, this optic really shines. Now, I'm using a UTG half inch riser in order to get a perfect co-witness with my backup sights, which if you haven't seen my video on the best budget BUA sights, you definitely wanna check out that video. And by budget, I mean budget. Like these things come in at $12, so. Go ahead and watch that video next. Now, the reason why I'm using a half inch riser instead of a three quarter inch riser to get a perfect co-witness is because this optic, like I said, uses a vortex footprint, but it does come with an adapter for a standard Picatinny rail mount. So I'm just doing an adapter on top of an adapter to get the perfect height. But if you don't wanna use an adapter on top of an adapter, you can use a vortex riser mount and that'll get your sight at the perfect co-witness height. Now I've enjoyed using this red dot so much that I got another one for use on my Ruger Mark IV. And it is just a really fast pointing optic. 
So let's talk about this optic for use on pistols for a little bit. So firstly, it's a great candidate for a Ruger Mark IV or some other sort of pistol that has a Picatinny rail mount, again, because the mount is included with the optic at that price, which is awesome. But if you're gonna use it on say, a Canik TP9 SFX or something with you know interchangeable optic mounting plates, um, you're gonna wanna use, specifically for the Canik, plate number one, which is your Vortex and Burris mounting plate. Now you'll notice on this plate that it has four little riser nodules that lock into the optics base. And something that you should know about the ET Dragon is that it actually only has a spot for two of those. It doesn't have the rear two nodule cutouts. So if you wanna run this on a Canik SFX specifically, you're gonna to need to grind off those rear nodules. I would just buy an additional mounting plate specifically for grinding that off because this isn't the first Vortex footprint optic that I've gotten that doesn't have those rear nodule cutouts on them. I've actually had this problem before with some other brands, but a replacement base plate is like 15 or 20 bucks. So it's not really a deal breaker, especially considering the price, how much you're gonna be saving by going with this optic if you need to buy an additional mounting plate for it. Now, I forgot to mention earlier that this thing does have a three MOA red dot on it, which is excellent for rifles when you can get that optic right up close to your eyeballs. You can see it nice and bright. But I do wish that they made a five or a six MOA version specifically for handguns because one thing that I noticed just one day when I was filming is that when I'm pushing the red dot way out there on a really really bright sunny day and I'm looking at a target that's been painted white sometimes I had trouble picking up that dot. I never had that issue with the PC charger or the AR pistol presumably because I was getting it a little bit closer to my eyeballs. So I don't necessarily know if it's an issue of brightness as much as it's an issue of the size of the dot. But that's probably my only real criticism of this site is that I would like it to either get a little bit brighter or for them to have a larger dot version for use with pistols. But again, other than that one day, I didn't have any issues picking it up at all. And like I said, I mean, even right now I'm looking through it and I can see it just fine. So it was just, you know, the sun was hitting it right, whatever. But, you know, that's a real issue, especially if you're considering carrying this on a handgun for self-defense, you want something that you can see in all lighting conditions. Now, one concern when I received this optic was, what's the battery life gonna be? Because it didn't have any published battery life information. And without it having any sort of auto brightness or dimness or shake and wake technology built into it, I just didn't know how long the battery was gonna last in it. So back when I first received it, I pulled out a brand new, fresh, brand name battery. It uses CR2032 batteries, by the way. Um, and stuck it in there and just turned it on on the lowest brightness setting to keep it fair. Um, and I was just gonna run it until it ran out of battery. That way I had a good idea of what the battery life is. So I started out checking it daily, just kind of thinking that after a few days it would go out. But after a few weeks, uh, it was still working just fine. So I started checking it sort of uh, every other day, bi-weekly and then weekly. And then here we are five months later and uh, it's still, still running. I've never turned it off. So that's pretty good, especially considering that I've had a few range days where I've turned the brightness all the way up to max for the duration of the range trip. In most cases, it's two or three hours, but sometimes as long as five or six hours. And then turn it back on the lowest setting and just, again, kept an eye on it. So by my count, I've got about 3,000 hours, maybe a little bit more on this thing, and it's still going. And now 3,000 hours as a published battery life is not anything special by today's standards. I know a lot of optics are in the like eight, nine, 10,000 hours these days, but it hasn't gone out yet. And I really expected it to, so I'm pretty actually impressed by that. So what I'm gonna do, since it didn't go out before I published this video, and I did wanna get this video done eventually, is that I will update in the description or maybe in a pinned comment when this thing goes out with its total battery life. Now, again, this is just unique to my experience. It's just a single optic and a single brand of battery. Um, so it's not by any means an exhaustive test, but just my personal experience. Now let's go ahead and do that waterproof test that I promised earlier. And I'm trying to figure out how to do this because I was trying to find the dot in the viewfinder and I just can't seem to get it to pick up. So you'll just have to trust me that it's on and working. It is on and working. So, but I'm just gonna go ahead and dunk it. Obviously I don't have a five meter deep water tank to test this in. So we're just gonna go ahead and test it right here. We'll just drop it right in. And that's, I don't know, that's probably long enough. What do you think? Still working. Again, I don't think there's any way that I can 
uh, pick that up in the viewfinder. I really wish I could. Because it is actually really neat that it can be fully submerged like that and still work just fine. Yeah, I've got no <laughs> qualms over doing this over and over again. Okay. Yep, still working. Still working just fine. Maybe in post-production I can bring out that dot a little bit so you can see that it's working. Now you can kind of see the glare a little bit because of the water spots on the lens. So, I guess that's that's proof enough. If you can see the glare of the red dot, then you know that it's still shining. So, that's cool. Um, I'm not exactly sure how to test a 1000G shock resistance, but why don't we just go ahead and drop it down on these bricks a couple of times. Okay, so survive that one. Let's do it again. Let's drop it upside down this time. Again, still working. All right, let's drop it straight on its face. It's getting some dings on it for sure. Still working. That time it turned itself off. Um, so yeah, what if I just like threw it up in the air spinning like barrel rolling? Again, it turned off. Yep, turn back on, okay. All right, so I don't know what your definition of shock proof is for 1000G. Um, it definitely survived those falls and it still works, um, but it did turn off the last couple tests when I dropped it straight on its face or did the spinning barrel roll. So uh, maybe I was applying more than 1000Gs. I have no idea how to measure that, um, but it still works. So I guess that technically still counts even though it powered off and maybe that's some sort of shock protection. When it is dealt a blow like that, it powers off to save itself. I have no idea, but it's still working. Let's see if I can pick up that glare again. Yep, so you can kind of see, uh, where is it? There it is, that kind of red glare in there. So you know it's still on, it's still working. So I'm gonna go ahead and just leave this thing on. And like I said, I'm going to update the description or maybe a pinned comment when this thing goes out for its total battery life. So far, over 3000 hours running strong. So I don't know guys, I mean, I'm really impressed. I guess I just had really low expectations maybe um, for a, an optic at this price point. Uh, that water test and drop test really made me a believer actually. So 150 bucks, it's likely made in China. I don't know if that's a deal breaker these days because a lot of the major brands are made in China these days. And so I don't know if that turns you off or not. Um, but I think for the price to get something that's waterproof and can handle those sort of drop tests uh, with flying colors really is pretty incredible. So yeah, it's just, it's a really tough little optic. It works great, it points great, it holds zero. I mean, I don't really know what else there is to say about it other than if $150 is maybe still too much for your budget. I do have a video on the best budget red dots under $50. Of course, all of those are gonna be quite a bit more bulky uh, and they're not gonna have that waterproof and shockproof rating like this one does. But they're still very good optics, so definitely check out that video next. And until next time, I'm Dan, this is Guns and Guitars, and I will see you in that next video. I just wanna to say too, I've left this thing submerged for about 15 or 20 minutes while I tried to stage the perfect thumbnail for this video. And the dang thing is still working strong.